You photograph some of the most famous people in the world, but you always seem to show a different side of them. How do you get them to open up in front of your lens? I don't know, really. It just happened. I, mean, I talk to them before I take their picture I do, or do anything. I, I sort of talk to somebody for at least an hour, I, as long as I can. And then the picture takes roughly 10, 15 minutes. What is it about your work, do you think, that really came to embody London in the 60s? Well, I hope it's not particularly the 60s, but the, uh, uh, I guess it was the most change. It was when visuals changed the most in the early 60s, and it carried on ever since, really. You've spoken before about London in the 60s being a real time of possibility, opening up doors to working class people like yourself or actors like Michael Caine. Well, it's the first time the working class had a voice because they didn't really... If you were born in East Ham, you stayed in East Ham. And you never worked for Vogue if you had an accent like me, but somehow it all changed in the 60s. I think there was too many working class, they couldn't keep them down. Your shot of Jean Shrimpton was really defining in terms of creating the idea of a supermodel. What was it about her that was so breathtaking? Well, I suppose Jean was the first. We, we lived together for about three years, I think. Uh, she was my first love in a funny sort of way, so it was perfect for me and her. But she'd have made it anyway, I and mean, I'd have probably made it anyway if we hadn't met each other. We'd just been different way of doing it. This is quite a lean, pared down exhibition and all the more powerful for it. How did you decide which photographs to include? Uh, mm, it's a difficult one though. Uh, yeah, I don't know, it's sort of... I suppose we could do it again completely different, but it, these all work so... I'm quite happy, I'm really happy. I mean, it's the smallest exhibition I've ever had, which I think is great because it's sort of, it's small, but it says it all, really. I mean, some of the sixes was a bit silly, so at least this is not silly. <laughs> Mick, no, I think, Mick, I think that's my coat. I said put my coat on. That's all I really remember, really. Uh, I done Mick, I used to do Mick often. I've done, I did him long before that as well. A uh, different picture when he was much younger, when he was about 18, I think. So uh, Mick was a mate, so it was easy. And Jean was a mate. And she, and Jane was a mate. And Andy was a mate. Uh, they're all, they were all mates, so it's, it makes it easier if they're friends. This is quite a difficult question, but what do you think it is about photography that's able to capture something that words cannot? Well, is that old? A silly saying that uh, uh, one picture's worth a thousand words. I suppose it's it's communication. I mean, we probably look at pictures more now than we've ever looked on our iPhones, or you do. I don't look at my iPhone much, but people seem to spend their whole life looking at pictures on their iPhone, not pictures, but information. And a photograph is information. I suppose it's instant, you don't have to read a page, you can look at a picture and it gives you the information you're looking for, whether you like it or not. And speaking of smartphones, how do you think photography has changed since everybody got a camera on their smartphone? Yeah, it's changed now because people don't look at the photographs much anymore. They don't look at iPhone pictures, they take them, but they don't look at them. So I think it's important to have hard copies sometimes because in the future, no, no, there's going to be no no images of now, because people do it on their iPhone and it just goes off into the iClouds, whatever, and it, it's going to disappear. Whereas once you add a hard copy, uh, sometimes I look at old photographic albums and they're much more interesting because they're hard copies. If they're on the internet, you just you take it for granted and you don't appreciate it. But uh, I don't think the, the, the camera on iPhones has got anything to do with, it's a different kind of photography should be called digital photography, it should be called photography because I still use film photography and all the serious photographers that, that I know use film still. It's quite expensive but it's the best. <laughs> David Bailey, thank you so much for joining us here on Showcase.